I just want to say thank you to the Briley team for having me here today. I am super, super grateful to be able to share with you guys here. Um, I also am super grateful that you're here. You know, I've um, been in real estate for 19 years, and I really feel like I found my breakthroughs when I spent time in rooms like this. So give yourself a round of applause, pat on the back, because I feel like this is really where um, you can find those things that will shape your business to get you to where you want to be. There is a quote by um, Abraham Lincoln, and it says, give me six hours to cut down a tree, and I will spend the first four hours sharpening my axe. So that's precisely what you're doing here today, is learning to sharpen your axe. So as I said, I've been in real estate for 19 years. I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I have been told I have an accent. Maybe, maybe not. Um, even though I can't blame that on the South because they also ask me where I'm from. <laughs> so this is just how I talk. So um, I have a boutique brokerage in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and it's a small operation. We do, um, I personally did a little over seven figures in GCI in a single year. And I'm also a single mom. Well, I'm with John now, so I can't really make that claim. But for six years, um, I was uh, a single mom. These are my daughters, Lola and Presley. They are in fifth and third grade. I'm also super focused on my health and wellness. I work out with a trainer four days a week, starting at 5 a.m. I do hour sessions. And... Um, you know, just try to juggle all the things that we face in life. My goal here today is to connect with you guys on some level, okay? I, I believe that regardless if you got your license last week or if you are a mega producer, that there will be information I'll share in this message with you today that will resonate. You see, several years ago, I went through a big life interruption. I went through a divorce. It was abrupt, um, very unexpected, and essentially I became a single mom overnight. I won't bore you with a lot of detail, but it was a great challenge. Has anybody else ever been through adversity, challenges? I call them life interruptions. You know, it's not about being a, going into being a single mom or going through a divorce. It's really about facing adversity. We all face it. You know, we're in a changing market. There's a lot of things happening where it's not exactly what we planned. And so you'll see that things come up, and then we are faced with choices. So when I went through this situation back in 2015, I had to make some choices. I could allow that to take me down, slipping into the darkness, taking on unhealthy coping mechanisms, or I could choose to become the best version of myself. I look at these two little girls and knew that I had a job to do. And it comes down to choice. I am a very strong believer that we can have a life and a business that we want by simply making choices. So at that time of my life, I knew that I had an opportunity to redesign my life. I started to ask myself questions. Okay, well, it's not going to be what I thought it was going to be, right? What do I want my life to look like? Who am I? Really, it was, a, you know, it was almost a change in identity. I can tell you today that I am most grateful for that time of my life. It was one of the most difficult times of my life, but it has shaped me. The growth is in those opportunities. When you are going through adversity, that is when you have the greatest opportunity to grow and to change and become the best version of yourself. To learn what you're truly made of. Wrong way. Hello? There we go. So it starts with vision. So when I ask myself questions, okay, what do I want? What do I want my life to look like? What do I want my business to look like? Who am I? 
Vision is the number one thing, and I think this kind of goes back to spending the four hours sharpening the axe is to get ready. I think that it's really easy, especially in real estate, for us to spend a lot of time in reaction, just reacting to all the things in a day. This is not quite structured um, like maybe a, a nine to five or you know a W-2 job. We have a lot of autonomy. But in that, we can get lost. Has anybody ever felt lost? Like, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do today, right? So I think getting very, very clear will help you stay motivated. So people say, wow, you're like so motivated. Well, motivated is not an emotion. It is not a feeling. For me, it's a mindset. Clarity and commitment to whatever it is you're trying to do will determine your level of motivation. You have to have a specific plan. I love to use this tool to give you an idea of some framework. And I'll share mine with you. You can steal them if you'd like. But every area of our life has to be filled in some way, shape, or form. I like to think of like maybe you have cups, empty cups. Um, in this business, if you get really, really busy, it's easy to experience burnout. I talk to a lot of agents like, I am just burnout. I am exhausted. And they are not focused on the other areas of their life. They're lacking in maybe their health and wellness, in personal development, in family time, fun. You know, it's not much fun just working all the time. Who only wants to work and not live their life? Oh, no hands. Okay. Me either. So this is, this is a, like I said, it's just a, a tool to use to take an honest look at your life. What do you want? How do you want that to look? So me, health and wellness is huge for me. When I put a focus on my health and wellness, everything changed for me, everything. I have more energy, I'm less anxious, I'm feeling great about myself. I mean, I wake up supercharged. You know, there was a time before I was focused on health and wellness where I would wake up right before I needed to wake the girls up. And I'd wake up and then I'd just kind of run into the day and, and it's, it was just not a great way to start my day. So when I was able to move that around and make the commitment to focus on my health and wellness, first thing in the morning. I knew that I couldn't make excuses. I'm making better decisions throughout the day, right? So I wake up at 5 a.m. Well, I wake up before that and get to the gym for 5 a.m. with my trainer. Well, I don't know what they think about this in Nebraska, but they frown upon leaving small children at home alone, right? Okay, so I think where there's a will, there's a way. And so, of course, before John and I are together, I have my home and I have my two little girls. I have them full time. And so I had to figure out, well, how do I manage to do a 5 a.m. gym session? And what we focus on expands, so I know that. So the more thought I give to something, figuring out, okay, there's a will, there's a way, I made a proposal to one of my administrative assistants at the office. I said, McCall, would you like to make a little extra money? I have a proposal for you. How about you come to my house like 4.30 in the morning. I promise not to talk about real estate. I promise not, I won't even turn the lights on. And you can just come in and sleep on my couch. I'm gonna go do my gym session and then I'll come back and you can leave. And I'll pay you to do that. I made it work. So I did that for over a year. Thank God for McCall, right? But I truly believe that there is a way. So there's something that happens. You hear me say like, oh, I wake up at 5 a.m. There's this thing that happens. It's an immediate response from perhaps in this situation where you say, oh, I can't do that because X, Y, Z. And you shut it down immediately where you won't even give it additional thought. But what if you recognize that about yourself, that you're shutting down? What do you believe? What do you believe that you are or are not capable of? Because you're the only person getting in your way. You absolutely can do anything that you put your mind to do. Where there's a will, there's a way. And so I would just want to empower you with that. Like, recognize those thoughts when you feel like, I don't believe that this can happen. Let's talk about business. There are some foundations and some principles that I follow. Um, and it, it kind of flows over to personal as well. It's who I am and how will I operate. I can tell you that I operate with honesty and integrity, which is not compromised under any circumstance personal and business. I can tell you that I don't make excuses. I take personal responsibility. I always try to figure out how can I be better? How could I have done something better? 
I'm not going to place the blame on someone else. If only, if only, if only. No, it's me. How can I make it happen? With business, it's being proactive and not reactive. Setting clear expectations, under promise and over deliver. So these are things that I use as my guideposts to how I'm going to perform in my business, how I'm going to deal with clients, how I'm going to make decisions in my personal life. And it has become my identity. Who do you want to be? It's choice management from there. Every morning I get up, I have choices. I can decide what time I get up. I can decide what I'm going to eat. I can decide who I'm going to spend my time with and what energy I'm going to give to this, that thing, or another. I'm going to decide if I'm going to be around gossip or avoid the drama. It's choice management, personal responsibility. The fun, the fun piece is huge for me. So vacations, there was a time in my life back when I was married, I literally did not go on a vacation for five years, like a no break. I just worked. I always felt like it was never a good time. But when I understood that this piece was actually going to help me fuel my business, whenever you're scheduling something fun, right, and I strongly encourage you to take everything that I'm saying on this life wheel and plug it into a calendar. How many of you follow a calendar strictly? Very strict. Okay, we'll work on that. Okay, so with the fun, you plug it in. Prior to leaving on your vacation, you've probably experienced this is you're tying up all the loose ends, and you've got a lot of energy, and you're doing all these things to get ready so that you can go out of town, right? And then when you're out of town, you have this recharge, this disconnect. I like the outside of the fishbowl perspective. It helps me really create, be creative, and I'm envisioning, and like, what do I want my business to look like in life? Kind of getting out of that grind and taking a step back, and then I come back recharged, and then now I also have all this momentum because of all of the activities that I did prior to leaving, tying up the loose ends. Has anybody ever experienced that? It's like, I should just go out of town more. I like sell a bunch of houses when I'm, going, when I'm out of town, right? Your phone just starts ringing crazy. It, I strongly believe it's because of the activities you're, you're preparing for that. So if you're not having any fun, you should just put it in the calendar and, and do it. So um, again, all of, the, um, all of the things that I focus here on my life wheel, I will plug into my calendar. I can tell you that when these lines are blurred and you don't have ruthless boundaries on how you're operating your life and your business, then things get a little messy and then it's very hard to perform at your highest level. I know that in order to operate at my highest level in business, all the other areas have to also be operating at a high level. Does that make sense? A man should learn to detect and watch that gleam of light which flashes across his mind from within. To me, that's that five-second rule. Speed to action. Speed to action will determine your rate of success. So when you learn, you're, you're learning all these great taxi, tactics and things like that here today, and you may be writing them down. If you leave and you don't do anything about it, what good is it? Speed to action will determine your rate of success. And so what happens, though... I want to drop this. Fear. I believe that people experience um, a great amount of fear. I think that fear is that word that really just means I don't want to do it because of X, Y, Z. I want to stay in my comfort zone. Right? What I have learned in sitting in rooms with high performers is they're all scared. Right? They're scared to take that next step, to make that next hire, to, to start doing the thing, to stop doing the thing. But the difference is the high performers, when they get to that, that edge spot right there, they say, okay, I know I need to get to this point, but I'm really scared. All the voices come in and say, you shouldn't do it because of X, Y, Z. These are the things that could go wrong. You know, this is not just about the business piece of it. It could be a toxic relationship. It could be a bad habit that you have. It could be something that you do need to do, something that you stop, need to stop doing. But you get to that point where you're like, okay, I need to do it. I'm going to do it. The average 
will just sit there and think and like, okay, well, I don't know. I'm going to do it. Maybe, maybe tomorrow I'll just sit here. But the elite take the leap. They take the action despite the fear. I actually purposely put myself um, in a situation where I can exercise this part of my mind. Has anybody heard of, ever had an ice bath? <laughs> it's gold. So I started to learn about ice baths. I'm like, okay, all these benefits. It's like circulation. It, it helps with depression, anxiety, and gives you energy, and it activates the brown fat and the vagus nerve and all these great benefits. And so I'm sold on it. I'm like, yep, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And then I'm getting ready. So I'm like, all right, I got my thermometer. I'm going to buy all the bags of ice. And then I fill my tub up with ice warm water and get the temperature right there at 60 degrees. Clarity and commitment, right? I'm committed to taking the ice bath, and I'm clear. I'm clear that it's going to be 60 degrees. I'm clear that I'm doing it today, and here's all these things. I'm ready to go. But boom, to the end of the edge of the cliff right here. Now I have to get in it. So that's when you start hearing that internal dialogue, right? The fear sets in. The voice is like, this is going to suck. It's going to be really cold. I don't know if I can do it. Whew. And it does suck every time for two minutes. So I get in, and this is the wall, but this is the exercise. So this is when I start to use my internal dialogue and my coaching to get me through that. I can do it. It's going to be okay. I'm doing my Wim Hof breathing. I'm sinking down. When I go, when I'm saying I take an ice bath, I get in there, and I soak up right there to my neck. So the first two minutes is really, really, really cold, and I have to manage my breathing and all those things. But then, after two minutes, I'm like, oh, that was really not that cold. I think I'm okay. So I'm breaking through, and I'm getting through that. So this is an exercise that I've done to put myself in a situation to activate and exercise that internal dialogue so that whether it be, okay, I need to make prospecting calls or recruiting calls or I need to make a huge decision in my life. I need to eliminate this. I need to let somebody go. That's You hit that wall and you've got to navigate through it. You have to learn how to navigate through it so that you can advance to the next phase. So if you're not ready for an ice bath, the other uh, exercise that you could do is getting an ice cube. You could say, okay, I'm going to hold this ice cube for five minutes. I'm going to set my timer. And you can hold it. But right there, when you hit that wall, that's when the exercise truly starts. You have to find that fire and that fight inside of you to push through. And that is the case with anything you're doing in your life. It is commitment, consistency. That is going to get you there. I absolutely could not do what I do without people. I have a huge administrative team. I have a nanny. But also want to encourage you to look at who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are you allowing to influence you? Who are you taking advice from? What do their lives look like? I'm a strong believer in having a coach or a mentor, right? It's really, really, really important. Even the, the, the professional athletes, the Olympians, they have coaches, they have trainers. It's not like I don't know how to sell. It's not like I don't know what to do. But there's a level of accountability there. People who have been through it already. People who can help you um, just that one extra little thing that's going to take you to the next level. The books you read. You know, when I realized that, do some calculations. Everybody makes probably different amounts here. But you can do some calculations and figure out what are you worth per hour. And then decide whether or not you need to be doing whatever it is that you're doing during the day. Okay? So, like, during the day, I have a, a nanny that picks my girls up from school, and she does the homework and studying piece with them so I don't have to stop my day halfway through. I have a cleaning lady that cleans the home because I know that my time is not best spent doing that. The yard guy. It's all about creating leverage. That didn't happen overnight, but... You know, as you add a piece and add a piece, it's going to take things off your plate so that you can do things that are closest to the dollar activity. 
you know, during the day, during work hours, we should be doing negotiating. We should be going on listings. We should be meeting with the buyers. That's it. I have a runner who does my sign and lock boxes. Creating that leverage is going to give you freedom so that you can work smarter and not harder, but to get there with people. Consistency is absolute key for me. When I make a commitment, I can tell you, again, guys, I'm not, I'm not like the most motivated person on the planet here. It's just who I've decided to be. So when I commit to something, if I wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym today. But I know that, okay, if I keep my commitment, it's those mundane things that are going to get me to where I need to be over a long period of time. So I want to tell you that um, there's a study, and it's something like they'd asked the dying their, like, top regrets, not to be morbid or anything. But we're all going to get there one day. And one of them was, you know, I wish I would have been true to myself and not living up to just what other people would expect of me, but just being true to me. One was they wish they hadn't worked so hard. I'm sure you've heard that. To actually live your life. I learned that when I started to pour into the cups in the other areas of my life, that I had more energy to operate at my highest level in my business. I mean, if I'm not focused on my health and wellness, how can I show up my best self for my clients, for the team I lead, for my daughters, for John? Right? I can't live depleted. You can't live depleted. To live your life. So the vacationing, and I, I coach you when, I, when I'm talking to, you know, a lot of it is coaching women. It's like, I'm just so burnt out. I don't want to do any of this. And so I think in order to really fuel and recharge, I mean, this, this is really, really, really important to get. And so when you take that, we talked earlier, and I asked you a question about your calendar. When you decide the vision of who do you want to be, what do you want your life to look like, then it's taking action on that, making a clear and specific plan and plugging it into the calendar. I mean, okay, I want to have some fun. Okay, well, what does that look like? Let's, let's schedule it. Okay, I, I want to make sure I'm hanging out with my daughters three days a week or cooking dinner for the, okay, let's put it into the calendar. I, had, I was talking to somebody um, a couple weeks ago, and she said, well, you know, things happen when I have an appointment, and it's from this time to this time, and then something comes up, you know, prospecting, right? This is my prospecting time, but then these people want to see a house. So I just gave an example. is to look at it in a different way. If you put it on your calendar and you are committed to it, say it wasn't prospecting. Let's say it was a closing, right? Let's say the closing was from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., and you know, somebody calls and they say, hey, this house just hit the market and I want to go see it at 1030. Are you going to abandon the closing? Like, oh, shoot. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be there. 1030. I'm just going to abandon my closing. You're not. You're going to protect that. Oh, I already have an appointment. I can show you at 1130. Right? So why are you not doing that to the other areas of your life? This is my gym time. This is my Family time, this is my prospecting time. This is my work time. Again, it's the autonomy in this business where we just kind of real loosey-goosey, and then everything's blurred, and everything's a mess, and then you find yourself, like, we naturally drift towards dysfunction. We just want to be comfortable, just kind of like, oh, what, what feels good today? But I promise you, if you get this piece, if you take the vision, you figure out what it is you want, who do you want to be? What do you want that to look like? And then plug it into your calendar and stay ruthlessly committed to that and boundaries. I'll just tell you, I have two cell phones. One is for work and one is personal. And so this is how I manage some of my boundary time, right? Because we kind of have to have the phone. I have littles. I've got like my mom or Johnny to get in touch with. I can't just like, oh, I'm just leaving my phone at home. So in order to eliminate the desire to jump into work and start that react mode and all that, I leave my work phone at home and I only take my personal phone. I don't even check my work phone until like working hours, like 8 a.m. 
I might get up at 4.30, and I'm doing all the things that I need to do. And then in the evening, I'm going to set it aside. Again, put it on the charge. Last I checked, nobody's going to die. If this is an emergency, call 911. I understand that offers have to be presented immediately. That's great. But that's where I have my team. They're watching the emails. If something comes in, boom, they're sending it to the client. But also, my clients understand that. Are you setting a precedence? Are you taking calls or calling your clients at 930 at night? Well, they're going to expect that then from you. But you can be a professional. You can set those ruthless boundaries. All of this is going to help you operate at a higher level and to give you a lot more freedom in your life so that you can also focus on the other areas of your life. But it comes down to visioning, making a decision. I want you to write this down. Choice management is greater than time management. Choice management is greater than time management. And I'm going to give you something that is going to be very personal for you. But I can guarantee you that if you run towards this thing, that you will see the greatest breakthrough. There is something that you need to do. It could be something you need to start or something you need to stop slash eliminate from your life. And I bet you know what it is. Something you need to start doing or something that you need to stop doing or eliminate from your life. Everybody has that thing. And let me tell you about it. Your heart knows what it is. Your heart is guided by the highest power. Your heart sends signals to your brain. You might be driving down the road like, I need to do this, or I don't need to be doing that. I need to stop doing that. I need to start doing that, whatever it is for you. It's something that is on repeat, 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 repeat. But you are not doing it. You are not eliminating it, or you are not choosing to do it. It could be something super small like you're prospecting. Like, I know if I did that and I called all my past clients and I'm going to triple my business. Or it could be something really big. It could be like, you know, I suffer from addiction. I have this relationship issue or I have this something else toxic going on or health and wellness or whatever. But there is something, and I promise that you know what that is, and I guarantee you, write it down. You don't have to share it with anybody, but write that thing down and circle it. That is the one thing that could change everything in your life. That thing. I've done it. I've been there. I've been in these situations, and I, I was telling my dad the other day, I was like, you know what? Every time I make a big decision, I notice that I'm like, what am I doing? But every single time I have done it, it has been the catalyst. It has been like a power move for breakthrough. Those things have gotten me from 250000 in GCI hitting a ceiling and hitting a ceiling and hitting a ceiling. Can't get past it to over seven figures in GCI. But also working on my health and wellness, traveling with my daughters, traveling a ton. I mean, it's like all of these. Is my life perfect? No. It's, it's progress, not perfection. And I'll tell you about that. Sometimes I fall off the wagon. Sometimes I don't eat, you know, super clean like I want to be eating. Sometimes, you know, I didn't, I didn't stay as consistent with my I'm like, oh, I miss Jim. Well, we naturally just drift towards dysfunction. So it's a place of no judgment and recommitting. It's a body of work, progress, not perfection. So you can't judge yourself for it. And for some, that one thing could be one thing in each category. If you do that, you will have the greatest breakthrough of your life. You know, many years ago, I, um, I bought a house. It was, I, I, it was very early in my career. It was my very first home. It was like 2005, and I, I had like quit my on-site sales job. That was like salary. And I knew in my heart, I was like, i got to do this, and I've got to leave this job because I'm, I'm going into real estate sales independent. I don't want to be at this place anymore. And I knew that's what I needed to do, and I trusted that's what I needed to do. But I was like, what the hell am I doing? So I bought this house, and I literally, like, I'm like, I have no job. I got to make this happen. 
But the growth is in that gap. When you hit that wall, when you get to that point, you're the edge of that cliff, and you're like, ah, oh, this is that one thing. That's where you're going to stand right there. And all the negotiating starts to happen, just like before I get in the ice bath, just like when you're holding the piece of ice. That one thing, you have to use your internal dialogue to talk yourself through it to get to that next step. That's how you're going to climb your mountain. That's how you're going to grow and create great success for yourself. So back to the end of life, you know, those people having the regrets. I don't want to have any regrets. Has anybody ever read The Dash poem by Linda Ellis? Just write it down. If you haven't read it, just Google it later and read it. It's impactful. The Dash by Linda Ellis. It talks about the dash between the, the date of birth and, and the death date, like, this is, that dash represents your time on earth between the years, right? Like, how do you want to live that? How do you want it to be? You have to start making decisions and, like, live for yourself. Forget what everybody else is thinking. Your limiting beliefs, what you believe about yourself, what you can or can't do. You have within you everything that you need to succeed. All of your dreams, hopes, and desires can be fulfilled by you by choice, Literally making that choice. And one decision leads to another decision, leads to another good decision. It's action creates momentum. In order to be different, we have to think differently. We have to create new habits. We cannot succumb to the same habits, the same routine, and expecting something different. It's a choice management. Ninja Selling is a great book to help you and grow in your business. One of my administrative assistants is reading. She's like, I feel like you wrote this book. It's like being proactive and all that. Um, another book that I think is, uh, is really good is Motivation Manifesto by Brendan Burchard. I want to encourage you today to put a heavy focus on that one thing because I believe that one thing for you could change everything. That's it. Thank you, guys.